Indo is a term used to describe Europeans, Asians, and Eurasian people who were a migrant population that associated themselves with and experienced the colonial culture of the former Dutch East Indies, a Dutch colony in Southeast Asia that became Indonesia after World War II. It was used to describe people acknowledged to be of mixed Dutch and Indonesian descent, or it was a term used in the Dutch East Indies to apply to Europeans who had partial Asian ancestry. The European ancestry of these people was predominantly Dutch, and also Portuguese, British, French, Belgian, German, and others. Other terms used were Indos Dutch Indonesians, Eurasians, Indo-Europeans, Indo-Dutch, and Dutch Indos. Overview Studio Portrait of an Indo-European Family, Dutch East Indies, 1890-1910 Studio Portrait of the Family Engelenberg Banjo Wangi, 1919. Portrait of a Child in Indo Sarong and Kabajar at a Coffee Bush, 1907 1931. Mrs. Mertens in Sarong and Kabajar, Java, 1, before 1888. Double sided card printed and handwritten in Japanese and Indonesian, in the name of Johanna Maria Durand, born Leuenberg, 72, Gunter Wegg, 12, Malang, includes photo, thumb print, and Japanese government stamps. Japanese Indonesian identity card in the name of J.M. Durand Leuenberg. In Indonesian common synonymous terms are Sinjo, Belanda Indo, Indo Belanda, and Indo means Eurasian a person with European and Indonesian parentage. Indo is an abbreviation of the term Indo-European which originated in the Dutch East Indies of the 19th century as an informal term to describe the Eurasians. Indusca is an abbreviation of the Dutch term Indusca Nederlander. Indusca was a term that could be applied to everything connected with the Dutch East Indies. In the Netherlands the term Indusca Nederlander includes all Dutch nationals that lived in the Dutch East Indies, either Dutch or mixed ancestry. To distinguish between the two, Eurasians are called Indo and native Dutch are called Totok. In the Dutch East Indies, these families did not form a racially, culturally and socially homogenous community between the Totoks and the indigenous population. They were historically Christians and spoke Dutch, Portuguese, English and Indonesian. They were compared to Afrikaners from South Africa, who also share Dutch ancestry and culture. In early pre-colonial history Eurasians were referred to by a Portuguese term mestico or as colored. Additionally a wide range of more contumacious terms, such as for instance liplap can be found in literature from previous centuries. History of European Trade and Colonialism in Southeast Asia Portuguese and Spanish in Southeast Asia Eurasians and Europeans in the Dutch East Indies were descendants of Europeans who traveled to Asia between the 16th and the 20th century. The earliest significant presence of Europeans in Southeast Asia were Portuguese and Spanish traders. Portuguese explorers discovered two trade routes to Asia, sailing around the south of Africa and the Americas to create a commercial monopoly. In the early 16th century the Portuguese established important trade posts in Southeast Asia, which was a diverse collection of many rival kingdoms. Sultanates and tribes spread over a huge territory of peninsulas and islands. One of the main Portuguese strongholds was in the Maluku Islands, the fabled Spice Islands. Similarly the Spanish established a dominant presence further north in the Philippines. These historical developments were instrumental in building a foundation for large Eurasian communities in this region. Old Eurasian families in the Philippines mainly descend from the Spanish while the oldest Indo families descend from Portuguese traders and explorers. Some family names of old Indo families include Simao, De Fretis, Perara, Henriques, etc. Dutch and English in Southeast Asia during the 1620s Jan Peter Zoan Cohen in particular insisted that families and orphans be sent from Holland to populate the colonies. As a result, a number of single women were sent and an orphanage was established in Batavia to raise Dutch orphan girls to become East India brides. 
Around 1650, the number of mixed marriages, frequent in the early years of the VOC, declined sharply. There was a large number of women from the Netherlands recorded as marrying in the years around 1650. At least half the brides of European men in Batavia came from Europe. Many of these women were widows, already previously married in the Indies. But almost half of them were single women from the Netherlands marrying for the first time. There were still considerable numbers of women sailing eastwards to the Indies at this time. The ship's passenger lists from the 17th century also evidence this. Not until later in the 17th century did the numbers of passengers to Asia drop drastically, given the small population of their country. The Dutch had to fill out their recruitment for Asia by looking for overseas emigration candidates in the underprivileged regions of northwestern Europe. Originally, most Dutch VOC employees were traders, accountants, sailors and adventurers. Their intentions may have been to stay. Some may have thought of themselves as temporary sojourners. In 1622, over half the Batavia garrison of 143 consisted of foreigners. There were also French, Scots, English, Danes, Flemings, and Walloons. Europeans living in Batavia also included Norwegians, Italians, Maltese, Poles, Irish, Spaniards, Portuguese, and Swedes. It is acknowledged that the number of Swedes traveling to the east on Dutch ships numbered in their thousands. Many settled in Batavia for long periods. Some of the settlers in the 18th and early 19th centuries were men, without wives and mixing occurred with the local inhabitants. Others brought family. The VOC and later the colonial government to a certain extent encouraged this, partly to maintain their control over the region. The existing Indo population of Portuguese descent was therefore welcome to integrate. An Indo European society developed in the East Indies. Although most of its members became Dutch citizens, the culture was strongly Eurasian in nature, with focus on both Asian and European heritage. European society in the Indies was dominated by this Indo culture into which non native born European settlers integrated. This would change coming the formal colonization by the Dutch in the 19th century. Eurasian men were recruited by the colonial regime as go-betweens in both the civil administration and the military, where their mastery of two languages made invaluable employees. Few European women came to the Indies during the Dutch East India Company period to accompany the administrators and soldiers who came from the Netherlands. There is evidence of considerable care by officers of the Dutch East India Company for their illegitimate Eurasian children. Boys were sometimes sent to the Netherlands to be educated, and sometimes never returned to Indonesia. In 1720 Batavia's population consisted of 2,000 Europeans, mainly Dutch merchants, 1,100 Eurasians, 11,700 Chinese. 9,000 non-Indonesian Asians of Portuguese culture, 600 Indo-Arab Muslims, 5,600 immigrants from a dozen islands, 3,500 Malays, 27,600 Javanese and Balinese, and 29,000 slaves of varying ethnic origins including Africans. By the beginning of the 18th century, there were new arrivals of Europeans in Malacca who made it their new home and became part of the Malacca Dutch community. Dutch East Indies Edward Dow Westecker, Gerardus Johannes Behren showed. In 1854, it was found that over 9,000 of the 18,000 Europeans in Java were Eurasians. In the 1890s there were 62,000 civilian Europeans in the Dutch East Indies, most of them Eurasians, making up less than half of 1% of the population. Indo-influence on the nature of colonial society waned following World War I and the opening of the Suez Canal, when there was a substantial influx of white Dutch families. By 1925, 27.5% of all Europeans in Indonesia who married chose either native or mixed-blood spouses, a proportion that remained high until 1940, when it was still 20%. 
By 1930, there were more than 240,000 people with European legal status in the colony, still making up less than half of 1% of the population. Almost 75% of these Europeans were in fact native Eurasians known as Indo-Europeans. The majority of legally acknowledged Dutchmen were bilingual Indo-Eurasians. Eurasian antecedents were no bar to the highest levels of colonial society. In 1940, it was estimated that they were 80% of the European population, which at the previous census had numbered 250,000. An Indo movement led by the Indo-European Alliance voiced the idea of independence from the Netherlands. However, only an Indo minority led by Ernest Dow Westecker and P. F. Dala joined the indigenous Indonesian independence movement. Examples of famous Indo people in the Dutch East Indies include Gerardus Johannes Berenschot and Eduard Dow Westecker. Political organizations in Discapati Est. 1912. Insulinder Est. 1913. Indo Europeisch Verbund Est. 1919. Freemasonry in the Dutch East Indies Japanese occupation during World War II The European colonies in Southeast Asia, including the Dutch East Indies, were invaded and annexed by the Japanese Empire. The Japanese sought to eradicate anything reminiscent of European government. Many of the Indies Dutch had spent World War II in Japanese concentration camps. All Europeans were put in Japanese concentration camps. First the POWs, then all male adults and finally all females with their children and adolescents were interned. Boys of 10 years old and older were separated from their mothers and put into a boys' camp usually together with old men. The Japanese failed in their attempts to win over the Indo community and Indos were made subject to the same forceful measures. Nine-tenths of the so-called Europeans are the offspring of whites married to native women. These mixed people are called Indo-Europeans, they have formed the backbone of officialdom. In general they feel the same loyalty to the Netherlands as do the white Dutch. They have full rights as Dutch citizens and they are Christians and follow Dutch customs. This group has suffered more than any other during the Japanese occupation. Official U.S. Army publication for the benefit of GIs, 1944. Indonesian independence struggle leaders of the Indonesian independence movement cooperated with the Japanese to realize an independent nation. Two days after Japan's surrender in the Pacific in August 1945, the independence leaders declared an independent Republic of Indonesia. The majority of Indo-males were either captive or in hiding and remained oblivious to these developments. During the occupation, the Japanese had imprisoned some 42,000 Dutch military personnel and around 100,000 civilians, mostly Dutch people who could not provide proof of Indonesian descent. During Japan's occupation, the Dutch were put into the lowest class. Native blood was the only thing that could free Indos from being put into concentration camps. 160,000 Indos were not herded into camps. On NOV 24, 1945, Sutomo leaked propaganda to specifically kill the Dutch, Indo, Ambonese and unarmed civilians. Hundreds of Eurasians were murdered and killed in attacks by fanatical nationalistic Indonesian youth groups in the Berziat period during the last quarter of 1945.